My name is Edna Stevens, and I'm here to warn you how easy it is for any one of us to undergo rapid and severe life changes. I've no idea what I was doing when Kennedy died, but I do remember vividly the day Maureen popped round to tell me my Charlie was having an affair with the butcher. I was in the middle of making a lasagna. I'd just sipped the bechamel and I was spooning hot mince over the pasta when in she came bright as a button and told me. Your Charlie's been spotted in town, she said. Well, of course, the first thing that entered my head as I filled the kettle was that it had been buying me a birthday present. I'd been dropping a lot of hints. I was after tickets for Mamma Mia. Charlie and I had always loved the musicals, but we'd never been to one in London. And somehow chess didn't seem right with all the parts played by women. Although you can't fault the Bridlands Women's Institute for the staging. They painted the entire hall black and white. Even the chairs. I sat on white. Charlie next to me on black. We didn't notice till we got home that the paint hadn't dropped. It didn't matter. Luckily we hadn't dressed up. You don't dress up for Bridland Women's Institute. They have a play group and I've come home with fleas in the past. Nothing a boil wash won't sort. Anyway, as I poured the tea, Maureen had that look, you know, when someone is bursting to share news and something about her made me think it wasn't good news. It was seen at the theatre, she said, with Bobby Blake. I blinked. Bobby Blake, the butcher? At the theatre? That can't be right. I said he's only interested in meat. Maureen did that prim little thing with her lips. Oh, Bobby's interested in meat, all right, she purred. Didn't you know? I just stared at her. To be honest, I thought she'd gone a bit barmy. Well, of course he's interested in meat, I said. He's a blinking butcher. Maureen folded her arms and leaned back in her chair. Bobby, she said, is gay. <gasps> well, that came as a bit of a surprise. I'd always thought he was as red-blooded as a rump steak. Then I laughed. It was Charlie knew I asked. Maureen leaned forward. Oh yes, she said. Charlie knows. And she sat there and waited for the penny to drop. It did so just as I had taken a sip of piping hot tea, which I'm glad to say I spat straight in her face. After I'd fetched her a tea towel and she'd retouched her mascara, Maureen told me that Charlie and Bobby had been seen sitting together at the back of the theatre two nights before. I was puzzled. There's no plays on at the moment, I said. No, there's no plays, she agreed, ferreting in a cleavage with the tea towel. But the Chippendales were on for just one night. I gasped. This was worse than I thought. Charlie had forbidden me from going to see the Chippendales with the girls from work. Too much for me at my age, he'd said, only half jokingly. The bastard, I hissed. Not only was he now batting for the other side, but I had missed the opportunity to enjoy some serious eye candy. And I can tell you, we don't get a lot of that in Bridland. It's mostly elderly pigeon fanciers with emphysema. Anyway, I digress. What are you going to do, Edna? She asked. I looked across at the pile of clean washing in the corner. All his shirts ready for Monday. Well, oh, bugger the ironing for a start, I said. It's only fair, said Maureen. After all, Charlie's buggering Bobby Blake. 